Hello guys, this is Topsy Kids here in the band of Frankie's Ukraine. So who do we have on the line today? Who do we have on the line today? Yesterday was awesome. Yesterday was beautiful. Yesterday was great. And I bless God. Because I have uh, I had an opportunity to share what I've been keeping for years that <laughs> I've been you know waiting to share all this smile with somebody with people with everybody any other person going through the same thing you know hello mr. oral <laughs> thank you for joining god bless you thank you so much George Peter for joining. God bless you. Uh, hello, Mr. Kinsley. I do thank you for joining. God bless you. Yesterday was really, really awesome. Yesterday was really, really <laughs> great. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Oluwatosi. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry if I don't pronounce the name properly. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. John, for joining. God bless you. So yesterday was beautiful. Yesterday was awesome. I got to share my, I had the opportunity to share my life experience yesterday. And though I didn't finish, and a lot of people were already blessed, a lot of people were already encouraged, a lot of people were already, you know, telling me thank you so much for sharing this amazing testimony. You know, that it, it was worth sharing. You know, <clears throat> many stops to gifts, and I'm bringing to you this story from Ukraine. <laughs> Ivan Frank is Ukraine. Thank you so much, Aku Bema, for joining. God bless you. I had an opportunity to share my life story yesterday, and some persons were like, "Wow, wow, wow! We, could this could this be real? Could this be for real? <laughs> you went through all this. You get, you know. I know a lot of us have." I've had experiences growing up as a child and all that. Some of you had beautiful experience. You never had any rough time. Everything was smooth, smooth, smooth all the while. Thank you so much, Mr. Akimbola, for joining. I don't know if it's Mr. or Mrs. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining, Akimbola. God bless you. Please share this video. Invite your friends. Yesterday was awesome, and I pray today is going to be awesome as well. Thank you, Why? Guys, the lessons I learned from my experience growing up as a child, the lessons I learned from my experience growing up as a child. Thank you so much, Ma'am Elizabeth. God bless you. You were here yesterday, and today you are back. Thank you. God bless you. And uh, thank you so much, Adebo Wale, for joining. God bless you. Share this video. Invite your friends. I'm sure somebody might. Uh, be helped somebody might be encouraged somebody might learn something from what I'm about to share and if perhaps you missed that of yesterday you could check it out uh, my YouTube channel Topsy Gift or on my Facebook page Topsy Gift as well and just uh, listen to my life story and how we're able to get to where we are today and how God has been awesome and super and we're still going forward <laughs> Thank you, Ajayi, for joining. God bless you, Mr. Samuel. Okay, now I'm going to share with you guys. Thank you, Nelly. <laughs> Nelly, thank you for joining. God bless you. Uh, the lessons I learned from my experience growing up as a child, I'm going to be sharing it right now. But before I share that uh, uh, ex uh, lessons I learned from experience I had growing up as a child, Mr. Dari Lutu, thank you for Doing and God bless you, sir. Before I share this experience, I had, you know, I learned <laughs> the experience, the lessons I learned growing up as a child. Before I share it with you guys, let me, you know, tell you a bit of this uh, experience I had. Just a bit, just perhaps once I wasn't able to share yesterday. Uh, like I said, I was born in Nigeria, in the northern part of Nigeria. And uh, <laughs> my father used to be boy, like I said in my previous video, my father had a lot of money working in a big uh, 
with uh, oil company and then like that he was having a lot of boys and all that working with him mr peter thank you for joining and you know we had everything smooth going on for us we weren't lacking anything as kids we weren't lacking anything everything was beautiful mr oh i don't know if it's mr or mrs blessing thank you for joining god bless you uh you know everything was just smooth and all that everybody was having fun everybody was enjoying i might even know what <laughs> what a bag of rice or salt or maggi or whatever costs in the market because we we always have things in bulk and you know before this sharia sharia law sharia um, war and you know crisis started in in the northern part of nigeria in Kassina to be precise and then muslims were killing christians and all that it got to a point like i said yesterday when we had nothing to eat we had nothing to drink we had okay we had just water in our house to drink and you know it was so painful because we lost everything my father cars were born into arches he lost his job everything was gone like at a, in a twinkle of an eye we lost everything we, uh, my father ever worked for we lost everything and we were even at the verge of losing our own lives nobody saw it coming nobody imagined what was really uh what was really happening what was really going to befall us uh thank you so much wilson for joining thank you so much ma'am former for joining you were here yesterday and you are here today god bless you i'm i'm so grateful for those your encouragements thank you nelly too those your encouragement thank you so much mr joseph thank you for joining so like i was saying we lost everything and <laughs> it's nobody saw it coming it was like a joke they started this whole sharia law you know they made some laws about uh, we uh, Christians having to dress like Muslims and it was just like a joke and then the male the female the, the male bike people don't do uh, you're not allowed to carry a female uh, passenger like a joke and we we're all thinking everything was just these guys are not serious huh? how can you say a man driver cannot carry a female driver just like that so it wasn't something serious all of a sudden it actually escalated something very very huge and entered it and even got to bloodshed people you know started killing people you know killing christian burning churches burning companies and wow it wasn't funny so and then we had nothing we had we had just basically we <laughs> it was a shock they bought my father's cars, collected everything we had, and so the only saving place we had was the army barrack we had to go, you know, to go have some shelter. And we are always in fear because we really don't know what will happen to our, to us at that time of, you know, the crisis, the war, the bloodshed. Everything was too. It was to the extreme. You know, the 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 Muslims don't. Uh, the the northerners they they don't want to see a Christian you know having been that you're a Christian they just don't want to see you with their eyes so they were just killing people thank you so much Mr Henry for joining Sylvester thank you for joining and uh, good luck thank you for joining God bless you so this was how we were all running to the army barrack as early as 2 a.m. in the morning or 3 3 a.m. we are there we had to stay there all through and then my mother used to leave us in that army barracks out from that army barrack to our house to come and make something that is she had to be sure that the place is safe for her to enter and then she will come in make something and then rush to army barrack to come and give us to eat <laughs> there was no there was no buying no selling no no church no business no work Companies were being born to arches, no school, no nothing. These were people who were living like kings, like queens, like prince and all that, you know. We never could we never imagined that something like this would ever going to befall us. We never had it in mind, you know. Um thank you so much for joining Johnny Keys. <laughs> 
so you get and this whole thing was really really raging this war was raging and we were we had we, we were so confused we didn't know what to do we didn't know what to say we were so afraid and guess what we had to eat <laughs> there was no food practically the food we had at that time the crisis started got finished so there was nothing to eat when my mother does was that for those of you who know corn maize if you know maize the dry maize when you dry maize and then you you put it you soak it in a in a bowl for a period of some days and then you take it to the machine engine to grind it after you grind it you filter it you know that shelf that shelf that comes out from that uh, blended maize <laughs> blended dry maize my mother we will we'll, we'll go to a very big trash um, trash uh, can you know trash places where people come to waste put waste bin and all that so when when people are finished grinding that thing and then throw it away this is what my mother would take we will go to the to the bin a very mighty bin where you know more people so people come to throw their trash we'll go to that place and then we will fetch a little of that thing and then my mother will have to dry it then we'll use something like a stone to to grind it and grind it and make sure it's a bit soft and then my mother will have to put a little water in her pots put uh, you know a, a little of that same that same thing <laughs> that same shaft she will put a little of it and then put water and then she will have to mix maggi salt and if there's oil she have to mix it and the same shelf she will then cook it and mold it like you know uh like uh, semovita and all that so we will use shelf to eat shelf <laughs> mighty god thank you so much mr kufre for joining thank you mr john akasi for joining thank you benny benny lee for joining god bless you oluwa Ola, oluwa thank you for joining you get that, that's what we were eating and then we had water so we were using shaft shaft that was thrown <laughs> shaft that was made from corn that people had already thrown away that's what we go get my mother will we will have to she has to risk her life sometimes she goes with me or my uh, my other brother or three of us will go in the night we'll get that shaft then we'll you know we'll dry it for a period of maybe two days or so and then we use look for a stone and grind it grind that shaft because we couldn't there was no there was no grinding engine anywhere because people already running heta skater looking for a way to save their lives so there was nothing so my mother thank you so much festus for joining my mother had to grind that thing and then we we'll mix it <laughs> put a little water put maggie salt if there is oil you put and then we use the same shelf, make it like semo bitter, and then we eat the same shelf. So we kept eating the same thing, and <laughs> at a time, all of us we were at, we were seven of us. My mother had seven children, so us the seven of us fell ill at the same time. We were spilling, we were vom vomiting blood, we were stooling blood. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh Jesus! We were vomiting blood, we were stooling blood why because of lack of nutrition we weren't eating anything good so my mother was practically giving us that thing just so that we can have something in our stomach but it wasn't food for god's sake it wasn't it has no nutrients for for you to to get a shaft shaft that is made from corn the 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 nutrients from from that maize is already gone so the shaft is what we are eating during that crisis during that war during that religious uh, uh, war we had to eat that thing just to survive because we had no choice there was no money there was no food there was nothing there was basically nothing for us to eat so we were just eating this and my mother didn't know what to do and all of us started stealing blood and vomiting blood and I could just hear my mother crying out saying God to please save her children to please help us that she doesn't know what to do there is no even hospitals hospitals were closed people ran away for their lives nurses and doctors everybody ran away because you can't even 
everybody just want to just want to survive people just want to leave mr emil thank you for joining mr korobas thank you for joining um pastor polycap thank you for joining god bless you so we didn't have that we didn't have anything to eat we didn't have anything to drink we were practically eating we we're practically eating rubbish absolute rubbish from a from <laughs> from being from a trash can from trash something we picked from 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 a, a, you know from a rubbish bin where people throw away their their waste products this is what we eat we go to that place and get this stuff to eat sometimes we even look for people's food that they 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 already eating and then they have, they are full and you know <laughs> they they already satisfied and they throw it away maybe mistakenly or they are okay they just throw we look for food to eat from a a mighty rubbish bin just so we could survive but these were people who lacked nothing we lack nothing to eat nothing to drink we we had good education and all that but we never saw this come my father never imagined that life was going to turn upside down all of a sudden but this was what was caused by ignorance and war but thank god like i told you guys yesterday we were able to survive that incident that war that crisis because two boys two not and two were working with my father vow to save our lives and we were being put inside a trailer carrying bags of onions just so that we can escape northern we can escape casino state crisis at that time we can escape we can escape there because those boys never they blocked all the all the um, entrance the entrance from Kasna to other states and then they block all the roads they don't want people to leave Kasna state because they want to keep killing Christians they don't want any Christian to survive so they want to just slaughter all the Christians to make sure that you know they reduce the population of Christians thank you so much uh, uh, thank you so much for joining NS thank you for joining uh desperado thank you for joining so these guys risked their life to save us and the only place they had to put us was a trailer carrying heavy bags of onions and were hidden right inside that bag of onions and you can feel practically onions the bags of onions heaps of these onions falling on your neck but you don't have a choice you just have to hold it. either you hold it or you hold your neck or you there was no air there was nothing coming from anywhere we were sweating there was hunger you can imagine the distance from Kasina state to the city of abuja and this whole thing was was so and we were pretty kids we we're not even adult we we're not even teenagers we were just kids imagine children of children of eight nine ten eleven you know 14 15 years my other sisters then were teenagers and then we were we were pretty kids we were like uh, nine years eight years and, and my mother had a little baby she was breastfeeding there was no food you can imagine a breastfeeding mother not having n nutritious foods to eat to breastfeed the, the baby in her hand how painful war can be how painful this war can be war caused by ignorance for god's sake hatred for one religion or, or the other something we never brought to us yes. but thank god the story is better. Thank you so much for sharing. Adewale, thank you, my husband, for sharing. Mr. Clement, God bless you, sir. You can share this video. I'm sure it's going to encourage people going, people passing through a lot, people going through a lot of things are going to be encouraged by this, my life story. So one of the things I learned in this, uh, in this whole thing, when we got to, you know, um, Abuja, the city of Abuja, and where I am today, how God has brought me to Ukraine to school. The poor girl who, you know, nobody believed that anything good could come out of this Nazareth, from, from this dungeon, from these people who were Rachel, who were poor looking, stuck. Oh my God, poor looking people who were almost not counted as humans. 
one of the lessons I learned from this whole event was that never give up in life never give up in life don't you ever give up yourself don't give up in yourself don't give up in God and anything you are going through anything you are passing through trust me God is involved God is he is not dead he's alive he's watching he's seen he's he knows everything you are going through he knows everything you are going through I'm going to, I'm going to post uh, uh, just a quote that I got online when I was reading and it got to me because it's it reminded me of what what I've gone through and where I am today and it encouraged me and this quote written by Dr. Anil Kuma Kinghali Sin, Sinha he said if there is a setback never lose heart <laughs> if there is a setback never lose your heart never lose heart you see in setbacks there is a hidden agenda demanding more discipline he said in setbacks there is there is hidden agenda that hidden agenda demands more discipline so it means that God has a plan for everything that is going on in your life as an individual, in your life as a, as a father, as a mother, as a sister, as a brother, as an uncle, auntie, and all that. God is involved. God sees everything you're going through. So never give up. Never lose faith. Never lose faith never lose faith you say if there is a setback never lose your heart in setback there is hidden agenda demanding more discipline and this same uh, 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 this same setback is also de demanding determination and commitment it determine it's it demands your discipline determination and commitment it's an opportunity to prove yourself against all odds to prove your words the important point is your conviction that you are capable of significant achievements or that you have something special to contribute <laughs> oh my god this quote got me so hard that you have something to contribute to humanity you have something to contribute and that is why you are facing what you're facing and that is why you're going through what you're going through i'm going to post that quote for you so that you you will see what i'm talking about don't lose faith don't lose faith be, be, don't lose your heart never give up never give up it doesn't matter how hard it is it's so painful it's like you you can't carry that cross it's it's so it's so difficult for you to carry it's almost impossible you are asking god why why me why do you have to put this thing on me this is too heavy for me to carry trust me you can carry it you can carry it if it's not enough for you to carry god won't bring it to you it got to a point in our lives and i felt i said god what is this i can i don't think i can carry this cross it is too heavy i am i am just a child how can i carry this cross god just just kill me and let me die i never knew god was preparing me for something greater i never knew god was preparing my family for his own glory and never knew god was going to use us to encourage somebody today that i everybody i i see going through problems and situations and obstacles and setbacks i just laugh and i use my story to encourage them because i i could imagine what they are going through i can imagine how much pain 
what is going through their hearts suicide people are committing suicide on daily basis because problems came upon them uh, uh, situations that they feel they cannot handle and the only thing that they find joy the only thing they have resorted to do is to end their lives because they can't bear it anymore of late i i had men uh, doctors you know jumping through uh, jumping into a lagoon in lagos you can imagine what will make a qualified doctor who has a certificate to jump into lagoon lagos lagoon you can't imagine how much depression how much that man is going through him and his family were going through such that they cannot bear it. they can't stand it anymore it's as if god is not alive there is no god and that they just end their lives but this man today in this quote challenged me he challenged me so much telling me not to lose heart not to lose heart that in all of these things it only take determination yes it's very painful yes it's very hard yes it's very piercing you can it's like you are the you it's like it's just the you are just the only one facing that situation on this earth it's like god has forgotten about you it's like you don't matter to god all of it that pain is too much on you in setback there is a hidden agenda and that hidden agenda is demanding more of your discipline more of your determination more of your commitment you know why it determines you know why you know why it's demanding you know why it's demanding for all that do you know why it's demanding for all that because it is an opportunity to prove yourself against all odds to prove your what to humanity to prove your what the important is that you are convinced in all that you are going through the most important of it all is that you are so convinced is that you are so sure is that you are standing strong that you are capable of this important this significant achievement so that something special something special you have to contribute to this world if God doesn't go through fire, it wouldn't be appreciated. It wouldn't be good. It's just going to be nothing. So for you, for you to have something, for you to be a blessing to your to your generation, you have to go through. You have to go through that same that particular thing that will bring out the gold in you, that will bring out the greatness in you. If if you look at the life of the richest man in the world today, Bill Gates, come on. Look at what he went through. He had to he had to discipline himself. He was so determined. He was not relenting, enjoying the wealth of his spirit. He was not just enjoying, you know, catching fun. He had to deny himself the pleasures of the earth just to get who he is. So you might not go through this the same thing I've gone through. You might have your own things to go through. You, you might be going through your own uh, um, stuffs, your own problems, your own pain. But don't lose faith. Don't lose your heart. Don't lose focus. Listen, the word is waiting for that testimony. Because you have something to contribute to this earth with your testimony. That was the number one thing I learned from everything that happened to me and my family. Never lose your heart. Number one, never give up in life. That was the number one thing I learned. Never give up in life. Never, never give up in life. Don't go and don't end your life. Don't go kill yourself and say, no, I can't do it again. I can't. I'm giving up. Don't. Don't. Come on. Come on. 
You can do it. You can do it. Look at me. You can do it. Just, just say to yourself, I can. You have come too far. You have gone too far to give up. Not now. Not never. You can't give up. You are about to make history. You are about to change humanity. You are about to bless somebody. Please don't give up. It was so painful. I can't imagine my mother going through all that. I can't imagine my sisters going through all that. And when we came to Abuja, the city of Abuja, it was even worse. It, the poverty did not stop. It was even worse. We could practically go to the street to beg on the streets to eat. It came to that point. It came to the point that we almost went on the streets to beg. To beg for food. Yes, it, come, it came to that point. Please, never give up. Never give up. God is in that thing you are going through. He is with you. He sees everything that you go through. Trust me. Trust me. He is there with you. And you know what he's doing to you? He is shaping you to a better woman. He is shaping you to a better man. He wants to glorify himself through you. He wants to rejoice when you be sharing that great testimony. If, all, if, if, if you don't go through that thing, if you are not, if you don't go through that situation, you might not have something to tell somebody when having issues tomorrow. You really might not have anything to contribute. You might just, you know, <laughs> most times, mm, mm, great men who, who did not suffer to make money might not even have compassion. And even if they do have compassion, they just do it out of compulsion or out of just a willingness of heart or just let me help this person. Mm -mm, let me just do it. But the person who actually went through, <laughs> who actually went through carrying the cross will almost sacrifice their life to better another. You know, one of the lessons I will never forget that I learned you know, from my life experience is never give up. You know, the second lesson I learned from my life experience is that everyone is great in life. Everyone is great. It doesn't matter where you are born. Your mother might even give birth to you in a bin, in a trash, with no hospital, no nothing. My mother gave birth to me. I wasn't born in the hospital <laughs> for your notice. I wasn't born in the hospital. I was born in a kitchen. Yes, I, this, this me was born in a kitchen. I wasn't born in a hospital. So it doesn't matter where you were giving birth to. It doesn't matter where you were giving birth to. If you want, if the if the devil wants, let him orchestrate your life so that you'll be giving birth to in in a bridge. He is just fooling himself because God has a destiny. God has a plan for that soul, for that life. Before he brought you to this earth, he had already predestined you. He had already said, the Bible said, before I formed thee in your mother's womb, I knew thee. So I have a plan for you. I know you. I knew you and I know where you're going to. I gave you purpose. I know what you, are, you will contribute to this earth. I have a reason for bringing you to this world. So don't lose faith. It's you. You are great. Don't lose faith. Don't lose faith. Never give up. Never give up. The third thing I learned from my, my my experience growing up as a child is always be focused and be optimistic. 
I know it's very difficult for one to be going through you know hard times in life and you are still optimistic you're still focused and all that it's almost like impossible it's <laughs> it's crazy I can I can what 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 should I even be thinking what should I be thinking about doing all that that doesn't even come to my mind it won't even come to my mind because what is uh, what is actually my confusion what is actually troubling me it's not all that it's not all that I want to post a quote for you guys so that you will you can be seeing the quote because this quote actually got to me when I saw them, I, I had to, you know, go through it. I just smiled and I gave glory to God. <laughs> and I was so excited and I couldn't wait to share it with you guys. It touched me. It bricked my heart. It reminded me of who, where I am, where I, I started from and where I'm going to and where I am and where I'm going to. So, I told you guys, the first thing I learned was never give up never give up the second thing i learned was everyone is great everybody is great it's not about confession it's about hard work it's about determination it's about determination it's about hard work it's about focus it is about you come on it's about discipline come on it is about you it is about you. The greater you, it's about to come out. The greater you, the better you, the, the glorious you, the awesome you, the beautiful you, it's about to spring up. Imagine that my, that my mother just gave up and we wouldn't have been alive to tell the story. We wouldn't have been alive to become a blessing to people wouldn't have been alive to share that testimony to share this testimony today so i'm going to the thought thing that actually i learned from this uh, my life experience is always be focused and optimistic like i say always be focused and optimistic now i'm going to read a quote by steve jobs i just posted it and it says sometimes sometimes life's going to hit you in the head sometimes Life is going to hit you in the head with a brick. <laughs> with a brick. Sometimes. It is not always. It is not forever. Just carefully read that quote by Steve Jobs. He said, sometimes life is going to hit you in the head with a brick. What kind of brick? Bricks of problems. What kind of brick? Bricks of diseases, sicknesses. What kind of brick? Bricks of disappointment. Sometimes life is going to hit you. It hits you when you don't expect it. it hits you so hard. It hits you so that you give up your life. It hits you so that you give up your focus. You give up your determination. You give up your zeal, your passion, your purpose. Life is going to hit you so hard that you will you're going to scream, Oh God, where are you? Why have you forsaken me? Sometimes it's going to so it's going to come so hard on you. But do you know what this man said, Steve Jobs? He said, Don't lose faith. Don't lose faith. Never you lose faith. Yes, it's going to come, but please don't lose faith. He said, why, why won't you lose faith? He said, because I'm convinced that the only thing that kept me, that is Steve Jobs, was that I loved what I did. <laughs> so it's almost impossible for people to not to lose faith when they're going through problems, when they're going through pain, when they're going through hard times. It's almost impossible. You know, when we were pretty growing up, we are still hawking on the streets where, you know, we had to, we had to constantly hawk on the street just to make some, uh, make money to go to school. Oh, Jesus, we, 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 
God, pain and suffering and poverty was the talk of the day in my family. It was an everyday thing. It, it lasted for years. It, it's not something that lasted for months, for one year, two years, three years, four years, five years. I'm telling you, it's something that lasted for more than 10 years of our lives. It was so painful. I could carry those things on my head to go and sell on the streets. And I, I'm just, imagine my life. I see children going to school. I see children, you know, their father carrying them in beautiful cars, you know, and they're having their beautiful uniforms, going to school, and you are carrying something, walking on the street because you don't have money. Your parents don't have you to send you to school. It is so painful. It is so, it is so painful. Like, you, you don't believe that you, <laughs> that a time in your life will come where, where you will, you will ever face something like that. I, I, I it is, it is more, in, uh, it is better for you to, to fall from, to grow from pro poverty to wealth, to riches, you know, than for you to fall from riches to poverty. It is, it is painful. It's, <laughs> Jesus. It is painful. I said to myself, God, please take me from poverty to, to riches, to wealth, to health. It, I, I can, you can, if you see anybody who fell from top to bottom, please pity for those people because they are going through a lot. Psychologically, they are going through a lot. Emotionally, they are going through a lot. They are going through a lot. Trust me. It is better you you were poor and, and after some time God elevates you, you became rich, than for you to to fail from wealth to poverty. It is very bad. It is very, very bad. And it's something that most people cannot stand and the only thing they resort to is to end their lives. So Steve Jobs challenged me with that his quote and he said sometimes life might hit you in the head with a brick please don't lose faith don't lose faith god is there with you in all of that thing i'm telling you this one i'm telling you god is with you he is there he is seeing it he is he's seeing you through he's with you even when you dash your feet against the stones trust me he's there he is there all of those things are just preparing you for the greater height he, he has for you for the greater person he you were giving birth to on this earth he's just preparing you for that trust me don't lose faith it is painful it is, painful. It is so painful my mother had beautiful girls and guess what temptation men were coming to us to want to offer us money to have to have us to have sex with us so that they can help us with their little with a little change they call money poverty is not something you're praying for your enemy yes but it's something that can strengthen you and bring out the best in you you know so my third lesson i learned growing up as a child is Always be focused and optimistic. Always be focused and optimistic because my mother kept speaking those optimistic words to us. She kept telling us, it's going to be fine. It's going to be great. It's going to be beautiful. She was always telling us, I could see you going abroad. She told, I could remember my last one telling my mother, I will take you, I will take you abroad. I'm going to take care of you. And, you know, we'll always sit down after... After we've gone out to hog, we'll get some money, we make something little to eat, we'll sit down together, we we'll read, we we'll study the Bible, we we'll pray, and then we encourage ourselves. And my sisters will say, Oh mom, don't worry, I'll take you abroad, I will take care of you, you know, I'll do this, and my mother will just be laughing. And we we she had just she had us so that we could we could encourage her. And she was she 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 almost gave up she 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 almost gave up her life because the pain was too much the pain was too much eh? the pain was really much 
and then <laughs> my father didn't give a damn I'm gonna talk about my father later on later on I'm going to tell you about my father he's great growing up without a physical father it's crazy it's crazy guys <laughs> thank you Jesus you know one of the things we also learned, one of the things I learned also from this, my, uh, growing, uh, my life experience growing up as a child, is hard work. I learned to be hard working. I learned to be hard work. I, I learned to be hard working. You can imagine. <laughs> I can imagine. I said, but sometimes I just sit and I imagine. I say, oh God, imagine you have left us, you know, being so much rich, having too much money and all that you know enjoying life we would have been spoiled children because my father we had people all around us every now and then we had people to take care of us take care of our problems to take care of everything we need you know every party party we and my house is 24 hours busy because there's too much money there's too much to eat too much to drink too much to wear so we were not lacking anything we we're not lacking anything so we would have been spoiled children, would have been spoiled brats. We wouldn't have known what life was all about. But God God saw that if I leave these children like this, keep having fun and fun and fun, and the father is not listening to me because my father and mother then weren't born again, they weren't Christian. So my father loved to have life. He loved to enjoy life. He loved to have fun, party and all that. So perhaps he was God was trying to you know help him to train us well and he wasn't listening and god had to stay, had to cause that war because of <laughs> i don't know if it's because of my family and then we had to go through all that just so we can be hard working god brought out those the strengths that was hidden inside of our bones <laughs> god had to bring it up bring it out we beg ah jesus we had to start working. Everybody had to work. We look for something to do on a daily basis so that we make money. You know, so that we can eat, so that we can help my mother, so that we can pay for the little, almost like nothing house that we stay. So that, imagine over six, you know, over uh, uh, seven children sleeping on one Tash little bed that everybody is so squeezed that when you wake up your neck your body everything is paining you because <laughs> there is no good place to sleep <laughs> and you live with rats with cockroaches with a lot of you know animals <laughs> around you <laughs> oh thank you glorious god so one of the lessons i learned from my life experience what hard work what was hard work my mother never gave up we ever gave up everybody was working so hard just to you know make ends meet just to help ourselves to encourage ourselves so that we can keep pushing on we just keep pushing on we never knew when that 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 beautiful light god is preparing for us will shine on us we were just pushing on we we're just pushing on and thank god today the story has changed and that's why i'm here telling you my you know beautiful experience so the fifth thing i learned from my life experience growing up as a child was that we were we uh, we had to learn how to persevere we learned perseverance we learned perseverance okay <laughs> me when i was growing up i remember several times when when i returned from school i don't like to be hungry when I don't from school, I don't see food. I cry. I make sure that everybody comes to know that ah, this girl is hungry. <laughs> I can't. I don't know how to pretend that I'm hungry. You know, <laughs> I'm so. It was my nature. I. Uh, <laughs> it was bad. But when this whole thing started, ah, my dear, you have to bear hunger. <laughs> We had to bear. We learned how to persevere. We learned. We learned how to how to be contented. We learned contentment by force. You had to learn how to be contented with what you have to eat, with what you have to wear, with where you see yourself, 
when you turn and you see beauty you see glamour you see children having all they want you have you see you turn left you turn right you turn front you turn back you see people just just enjoying life you what you what would what 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 we learned was what perseverance we learned perseverance and we learned how to love ourselves how to love ourselves we also learned that how to love ourselves how to love others how to love others you know when people were spotting us oh my god somebody say network is so bad are you serious so if you can hear me you just say I just say you can hear me just type you can hear me so that so we so I if you actually can hear me properly oh I'm sorry about the network sometimes it's like that it fluctuates you know, so this was what was happening and it was really bad it was really bad last born <laughs> oh, somebody's name is last born thank you for joining God bless you David thank you for joining my God bless you. Uh, I don't know if I don't see your name, please. Everybody, thank you so much for joining. For all those that have shared, thank you so much. I'm grateful. God, God bless you, all of you. God bless everyone that have shared. Those that have commented, God bless you. I know this story will help somebody out there because a lot of people are facing through, going through a lot of things. Trust me, people are going through deep, deep shit. People are people who are in pain so you never you you won't believe who whose life this this uh, this experience of mine might be saving might be encouraging somebody might going through something and is about to give up a life and when they hear my own story is even worse they can come down <laughs> because sometimes when you're going through pain you think yours is the highest. You think yours is that you are. Mm, I don't think any other person is going through this thing. I think my own is. I think my own is the highest. No, no, no. I don't think people are going through this. I think my own is the worst. Just wait until you hear another person's story. You are going to. You are going to be amazed that what, what I thought I was going through something. I never knew. God was just playing with me. <laughs> so I believe that this testimony is going to help. A lot of people out there so just share it not for my sake but for sake of who who are passing through a lot you never can tell clothes actually these are where these clothes can cover a lot people can be going through a whole lot and still be wearing beautiful clothes and they are dying inside you wouldn't know you wouldn't know so thank you so much for sharing thank you for your comment I really really appreciate it. God bless you thank you so much so we learn perseverance we learned how to persevere in life. We learned how to appreciate people. We learned how to appreciate ourselves. We learned to encourage ourselves. We learned how to be optimistic. We learned, you know, focus. We learned determination. We learned a lot just so that we can, we can keep pushing on. We learned how to say the good words. We learned a lot. So God was just shaping, shaping my family and I so we can have something to tell, so we can have testimonies, so we can encourage people, so we can be a blessing. Nobody thought that, we can, that my family, that anybody in my family will ever, will ever go to school, will ever go to, <laughs> not, we, will ever go to secondary school, let, let alone university. Nobody. But my mother kept telling us that everything is going to be fine and that she wouldn't mind selling her wrappers so that she, we can uh, we can get to the highest height of education and it was almost like a curse it was almost like through what people were uh, you know telling us because my brothers my sisters and i everybody when we finished secondary school we kept writing jam in as much as we we're not failing but we were not getting admission still so so everything was just was so confusing as well so we were so tired of life even after your struggle after you study with the poverty with the hunger in your stomach you still study your book you still get good good scores you still don't get admission to university so it was so frustrating 
We were asking God, what is all this? Haven't you dealt with us enough? If our father, fathers, if our great grandfathers or our, my father or whoever has committed sin, for God's sake, do you have to punish us? You know, you know when you are going through pain, you just ask God a lot of questions. <laughs> you just ask God a lot of stupid questions. All the things were running through my mind, and I was asking God, what is this? What is this? This is too much. Forgive us if we had wronged you. Forgive us. I never knew. Those those things were not didn't come because we actually run wrong God. It came because we needed it so that we can be where we are, so that we can have testimonies, so that we can encourage somebody today, so that people can be blessed, so that his name can be glorified, so that he can be glorified. But thanks to God. I would have been a spoiled child. I would have been spoiled. I wouldn't have known about life. If I see people, poor people on the streets, I wouldn't even blame them for being poor. Because I wouldn't really know what, how they all got to that point, how they became poor, how their life turned out to be like that. I wouldn't have, I would have even spat on them. I would have even poured them what I would have told them, get out of my sight. You look stinking. You are stinking. You are smelling. You are a shit. I would have been looking down on people today if not that God had to shape in our lives, had to put us through this road, had to we had to go through sweats just for him to teach us lessons about life, about life, and for him to be glorified and for him to, you know, up, um, lift us to where we are today. Thank God, my brother is studying electrical electronics in university same with my young sister today i'm an economics in ukraine i'm studying so you see beautiful god the master planner he has a way to plan everybody's life he is the the god who knows how to who have how to structure people how he can direct people your own direction might not be the same in fact, some people, the only way to even be, make them become better people is to even, you know, put them in a, in a rich man's house so that they can, you know, just learn from the same world. <laughs> God is just amazing. God is just too much. So, I'm so, I'm so, I'm so grateful to God for all the things we went through, for all the pain, for all the pain. Jesus, for the pain, I I am still grateful to him. Because, it, like I said yesterday, it came to a point where I wanted to die. I said, God, kill me or I kill myself. It happened to me twice. I went to the main road, to a very busy road in the middle of the night. And I stood there, I folded my hands, in, arms in tears, and I said, God, kill me. I said, God, kill me. Thank you, Mr. Kofi Power, for joining me. I said, God, kill me. But I didn't know how I, I left that place and got home. I slept and woke up and I was like, what? What am I doing in this bed? I thought I would have been dead by now. And the second time I tried to take my life was that I took something. I, I think I took something I think was really poisonous. And I slept. I said, I'm sure that when I sleep, I will not wake up. Trust me, I woke up health, uh, healthy. And I was like, God, I thought I drank something that I was supposed to die. And I slept I was supposed to die. I told you to kill me. Why didn't you kill me? I didn't die. I didn't die. The pain, the penury was too much. I couldn't bear. I couldn't watch my family go through pain. I couldn't bear to watch my mother go through pain. Watch my mother go through pain. My sisters. It was as if... On a daily basis, there was no hope. Everything was increasing. Every, the pain was increasing. We couldn't see any way to say, Oh, today is better. You, yesterday is better. Oh, thank God. Thank God for today is better than yesterday. Everything, every day was getting worse. Every day was getting worse. Nothing was changing. Thank you so much, Adeni, for joining, sir. God, God bless you. It was painful. My experience was so painful. I wish, at the time, I wish never, 
I wish God, why did you bring me to this family? I wish never to be born in, in that family. I said, what kind of poor Rachel people is this? What, why did this, my father even had to bring me to this earth? To come and go through this whole pain. Did I, for God's sake, did I ask for this? I, was, I didn't bargain for this. Why do I have to go through pain like this? I have to blame my father. I blame everything. I blame I blame everything. I blame God. I blame my father for bringing me to this earth. I blame God for even agreeing, for allowing my father to bring me to this So I was, thought, I was thinking that it was my father who brought me to this earth. So I was like, you who brought me to this earth and God who allowed you to bring me to this earth. I, I am so angry with all of you. The pain was so much. The pain was so much that we couldn't bear. Jesus. And as I, I, I'm using this opportunity to encourage as many who are going through a lot in this, in this, uh, out there, please don't lose faith. Don't lose faith. Like Steve Jobs said, that, you know, sometimes life will hit you in the head with a brick. He said what? Don't lose faith. Sometimes it will hit you so hard. It will hit you with a brick. Thank, th don't think it's an ordinary brick. Bricks of problems. Bricks of disappointment. Bricks of sickness. It will hit you so hard. Trust me. As long as you're, you're on earth, you're carrying flesh. In fact, if that, if that doesn't hit you now, trust me, it might come tomorrow. It's not a prayer. I'm not telling you. But just so that when it comes, you just know that you didn't it didn't come because you planned for it it didn't come because it came to kill you it came so that it can make you better it can bring out the great man in you the great woman in you the great personality that, that personality that that man that woman that the whole earth is yearning for that they've been waiting for that that pain that brick that has hit you is coming to shaping you to make you better to, so that God can be glorified in you, in your testimony. I could see man without arms, without legs, Pastor Nick, making history, become a personality. I, 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 I cannot, I don't, I can't imagine what, what, what Pastor Nick was thinking when he was giving birth, when, when they gave birth to him. I can imagine him. Asking God, why did you give birth to me without legs and arms? Why was I giving birth to without legs and arms? What, am I a cost child? Why do you have to bring me to this earth? This is so crazy. This is so crazy. Why did you bring me to this earth? But today, Pastor Nick is making history. Thank you so much, Major, for joining. Thank you so much, Mark Anthony, for joining. God bless you. You see? So I might be born with legs and arms, but my own uh, brick, my own problems, what God has orchestrated for me is different from that person who was born without legs and without arms. Trust me. So if Nick, if Pastor Nick had said to, to God, oh, okay, because you brought me to this earth without arms and without legs, I'm going to kill myself. I don't deserve to, to I can't stand the intimidation. I can't stand this whole shame and disgrace. Having to stand with somebody who I'm older than, but the person is far away taller than me. So I can't stand the depression. And then he ends his life. The, imagine the life that that man is changing today. He wouldn't have been able to change those lives. He wouldn't have been able to make three. Nobody would have been able to be encouraged by a man who had no arms and no legs. But Pastor Nick looked at himself and said to himself, no, this, this problem, people are seeing it as a problem. Yes, I, I came without arms, I came without legs, but I can't see it as a problem. I see it as a message. And what did he do? He began to read books. He began to make researches. He began to learn. He began to equip himself. So that when he speak, at least he said to himself, okay, if I don't have legs, if I don't have arms, at least I have mouth. I can talk. I have eyes. I can see. I have ears. I can hear. Let me use this part of my body that is, that is still alive to be a blessing. 
that is still very functional to be a blessing before I leave the earth. And he began to equip himself. He began to read. He began to study. And today, he is not just a, a motivational speaker. He is a pastor. People could look up to. People could look to look at his life and say to to themselves, Ah, if a man without legs and arms is making history, what am I doing with full? What am I doing, full fleshed human? What am I doing? Thank you so much, that is Charles Akbaza for joining. God bless you. Abu, thank you for joining. Adiola Disuma, thank you for joining once again. It, it, you, you get, so if, because Nick would have said to himself, I'm sure some people were born deaf. Some people were born blind. And they are still making history. And they can still contribute their quarter to humanity. And they could still encourage people. So if I if I if I have eyes, I have mouth, I have nose, I have ears, why can't I be a blessing? Why should I be complaining? So that was what Nick was doing. So my family, we had legs, we have arms, we had no deformity, but poverty was to the was the highest, was the talk of the day. So we were trying to kill ourselves just because the the problem was intense. The the situation was so much that we almost gave up a life. But today, we are now testimonies to people. My testimony is now help people that people can tell me, thank you so much for sharing this. It is so touching. It has liberated me. Oh, I almost gave up. But you see, this testimony has strengthened me once again. Has reminded me that there is hope for the living. There is hope as long as I have... I have life. Mr. Ani, thank you for joining. God bless you. So, somebody can be encouraged by your own testimony. Somebody can be glorified. God will be glorified. So, don't look at yourself and say, Oh, this problem I'm going through is too much. Let me go and die. That man who, who, who went to jump, that the doctor who ended his life in, you know, in Lagos, in Lagoon, did not do any good to himself. He did more harm than good. That problem he went, he go, he, were, he was going through, would have, excuse me, would have become a testimony for people to to you know to learn from. There are people in sports today that they are, they have deformity. They have deformities and they are still making history. There are people with their eyes. The people with their eyes are still making history. The people with their legs are making history. Arms, they are making history. People are people are deaf. They, but they have eyes. They can still <laughs> they can still do something. So my 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 lessons, the you know, the lessons I learned from my life experience. For those of you who 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 really did not you know listen to that of yesterday, you could listen to that of yesterday. Today it was far it, it was just too heavy. <laughs> it, that's where you get the, the full details. It's it was war. It was really bad. It's something that people will go through and they, they, they some of them won't survive it. Being that we were children, the pain was so much that we would have would have ended our lives. We would have given up a long time ago. Dauda, thank you for joining. Bila, thank you for joining. As children, innocent kids. So it wasn't as if your mommy is going to look for food to give you so that she stays, she will stay hungry. There was no food anywhere. Everybody was like this. We're all looking at ourselves. And imagine little children. Wouldn't have to cry for food. So the experience I went through had to teach me the real life. How to be determined, how to be how to persevere, how to be strong, how to be a great woman, how to be focused, how never to lose faith, how never to lose uh, to lose my myself. It brought out self worth. 
there was no words because we had to be telling ourselves you are great don't worry tomorrow is going to be better it doesn't matter what we're going through today tomorrow is going to be better tomorrow is going to be better joy will come in the morning yes we're going through dark times this is a dark time of our lives tomorrow is going to be better so we were always there to encourage ourselves I didn't have time to study mathematics. I didn't have time for mathematics because there was no even time to sit down to do all that. So I hated mathematics because it, waste, it used to waste my time. <laughs> but my elder brother is very good at it. He was so passionate that he studied uh, electrical electronics. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. Goodness. Uh, goodness Outreach Ministry, sir. Thank you so much for joining. God bless you, sir. Please, you can share this video and get somebody encouraged. So, you know, we had we had arms, we had legs, we had all that we can see, we can hear, we we can talk, but we never as an instrument of blessings because poverty was was the talk of the day. And imagine a, a child who is walking on the streets, you know, having to look for money to make ends meet. You don't, you don't even have time to think to you know to try to encourage encourage who for god's sake you have you, to, we were pretty kids of course <laughs> but you know what god was shaping in us god was you know reforming our lives god was trying to teach us a greater lesson god was trying to make us to understand life so that, so such that we can be a blessing to humanity such that we people will hear our testimonies and they will they will be like what you went through all that you really went through all that and you did you were still you are still serving god and what you were still alive you are you can still encourage somebody you can still love god <laughs> because some people will not will never love god again they said they will still they will tell you there is no god god does not exist i don't think there is god again because it was it was a hard time that we couldn't bear it was a hard time that was so was so painful it was really painful but to god be the glory we are here to share this testimony just to be a blessing to every one of you out there just to encourage you just to tell you and and just to tell you that god is still god that god is still good so i hope you learned something today the lessons I learned from my experience, I will repeat it for just to, you know, to run it up again is number one, never give up. Number one, never give up. Number two, everyone is great. Everyone is great. Number three, always be focused, focused and optimistic. Always be focused and optimistic. And number four, I told you guys, be hard working. If the experience taught us hard work it taught us how to be hard working it taught us how to be determined how to be focused how to how to speak the right words you know, so number five was perseverance so number five was perseverance was um those were the things that my life experience actually taught me and how to how to be contented with what we had how to be contented because those those uh, hard times and you know, being that my mother had beautiful uh, girls, men were always coming to you know give us money so that they can have us, you know, have have us at their side, you know, have sex with us, you know, just to help us because we're so poor, we're so poor. So, but but with all that, we could still be contented with what we had. So that uh, that that situation taught us how to be contented with what we had. So. I am so grateful to God for that we passed through today. Thank you so much, Anthony, for joining. Mam Stella, thank you for joining. God bless you. So thank you so much, guys, for staying with me all through this time. The lessons I learned from my experience growing up as a child. Thank you so much. And God bless you because we have come to the end of today. You know, yesterday was awesome sharing my experience and today where the lessons I learned from this, those experiences I had, you know, those experiences I had as a child, and how it has threatened me and made me a personality and made me a better person today. So, 
don't lose faith i'm going to close you guys with this quote from steve jobs once again say sometimes life will hit you in the head with a brick don't lose faith don't lose faith i'm convinced that the only thing that kept me is that I, I i loved what i was i did i love what i did so don't lose faith life is going to hit you might have hit you even now but don't lose faith it's gonna be fine trust me so thank you so much for being with me god bless you keep sharing this video tag somebody invite somebody just to be a blessing and just to encourage anybody out there who is facing through problems and all that so god bless you thank you for being with me so bye guys